Hey guys, Thunder E here, and this is the video we've been waiting for the Xbox Series X versus the PlayStation 5. Now, I know you're looking for a battle to find out which is the best, but we're gonna let you know which is best for you. Now, stay till the very end because we have a special giveaway for you guys. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button, notification icon, and let's jump in. Okay, taking a look at both consoles, let us start off with design and hardware. Now, Microsoft went to a very different approach with something more traditional PC-like, while PlayStation with the PS5 went with something more stylish and different. In terms of artistic views, you can go whichever way you want, but one is definitely larger than the other. The PlayStation 5 is a behemoth of a console. It dwarfs the Xbox Series X, even though the Xbox Series X is supposed to be the more powerful console. Now, in terms of hardware, we know internally they're all using AMD's GPU and CPU, uh, which is great, so giving us a really good performance. They both have Blu-ray drives. Of course, you can get a digital PlayStation 5 and you can get the Xbox Series S, but we're staying with these two consoles. Now, in terms of connectivity and ports, this is where things differ a little bit. Microsoft has a USB port in the front, same for the PlayStation, USB 3.1, while um, they have two USB uh, ports at the back for Microsoft and an expansion slot for, of course, your uh, storage. Well, PlayStation has uh, a USB Type-C port at the back, which is nice in front, so you do have that there as well, at least some future-proofing. Speaking of future-proofing, the uh, PlayStation 5 comes with Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6 connectivity, which means faster downloads, faster connectivity, while the Xbox Series X is, uh, is Wi-Fi 5, which is really fast, but not as fast, of course, as Wi-Fi 6. Now, the other thing both consoles have, of course, is next-gen gaming features. We're talking about HDMI 2.1, which means you get things like variable refresh rates, uh, 4K 120, all those beautiful things that you can clearly see on that LG TV. I want to thank LG just quickly for sending over the 48-inch uh, OLED. It's not a sponsor or anything. I've been using it to game with both consoles, and it's been a great experience. But here's where things differ with both consoles. So Microsoft provides you a HDMI 2.1 cable, which allows you to take a full advantage of that LG OLED TV to go through all the feature sets like VRR, um, 4K 120, uh, getting the high resolution, while Sony does not provide you with uh, HDMI 2.1 cables. They provide you with these cables, which are HDMI 2.0, which means those features I mentioned, you cannot achieve. To say it again, Sony does not provide you those cables, which to me is ah, mind blowing. Absolutely mind blowing. Anyway, let's look at the controllers. Both of them have next gen controllers. One's more next gen than the other. And I have to say, while I do like the Xbox controllers, one of my favorite fit controllers, Sony has done something completely different with the PlayStation 5 controller, making it so much more usable. It feels really premium, the uh, detailed control, the haptic feedback, the touchpad, just the ergonomics of it make it really unique. And I think this is something that they've done a really good job. While Microsoft said, look, the Series X controller from the Xbox uh, One X controller, we would make some slight improvements to it. It's not broken, let's just enhance it. Sony went and improved their controller. And I have to say, this is probably one of the best next gen controllers out there. Okay, so the big thing you guys are concerned about, of course, is games. Now, this next-gen console, we promised 4K 120, we promised 8K, all these different things. What about the games and how well do they play? Now, it's a very tricky situation because this is one of the few launches where there are very few big next-gen titles. Uh, Microsoft has very few, leaning more in third party, while Sony has a couple for you to go with. So let's start off with Sony with the two games that they at least are highlighting. One of them is uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, which looks absolutely fantastic. It's a great looking game. Highlights the functionality of the PlayStation 5. Looks really, really good and plays well. It's a short game, but again, it's worth picking up for the PlayStation 5. 
Now, when we move over to uh, the next game, which is Demon's Soul, which of course is a remake of an older game. It looks nice, it plays well. To me, it's a bit of a dull game. Uh, it's something I'll say mm, you might want to take a look at or you know look at some reviews, but it does still highlight some of those next gen features. But Spider-Man is the key game to get. Now you can play some of the older games, in my case, like God of War, which look good, look slightly more enhanced, uh, but of course takes advantage of how well it plays on the PlayStation 5. Now, on the Xbox side of things, it's a bit different. Microsoft is leading more on third-party games and also leading heavily on Xbox Game Pass. So one of the big games I've been playing is, is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's a, it's a good looking third-party game, plays well on the console, but what Microsoft really wants you to do is take advantage of Xbox Game Pass. And for me, this is where Microsoft has a different path from what Sony has. Sony wants you to go with first year titles. Microsoft says, look, we've got a library of games at your fingertips. So one of the great things is when I started, I was able to go back and play some Titanfall 2, which is really good. And also I was able to access games from EA Play, which is part of Xbox Game Pass, which means Jedi Fallen Order, which I haven't played, I can play immediately. I can also play FIFA uh, as well. And Madden, if you're a big Madden fan, so Games that a lot of people like to play, I think might be more situated, in, especially in the group setting with your friends on the Xbox Series X. You've got a huge library of games there. Um, also, of course, games like Watchdog, Yakuza, they're a great library of third party games and also games you can play on Xbox Game Pass that takes a full advantage of the system. Now let's move over to listening as features. Now this is where they differ quite extensively. So with the PlayStation 5, the PlayStation Hub has a couple of features that are really unique. One of them is, of course, recording and sharing. It's a very simple feature to hit that share button, take a screen capture, hit the record button, or and save it and share it directly to YouTube right there from your PlayStation. You can also edit on, on your console, smooth and easy. While you can do that on the Xbox, Sony just has that more fine-tuned all the way through. Now, when we look at uh, what we have with the Xbox Series X, a completely different set of features. One of the best features is the instant on. I love that feature. The fact that you can actually turn off your Xbox completely, hit the power button and it turns on like that, nothing beats it. It means you can jump right into your game. Another feature, of course, is the quick resume. Quick resume is great because you can jump from game to game. Say you're playing Gears of War 5 and you're having a good time and you're like, you know what, I wanna go back to Forza Horizon. You can literally hit the Xbox button, select Forza Horizon, and in a matter of seconds, you're playing Forza Horizon 4. That's how good it is. And you can go between, I think, uh, four or five games that allows you to jump back and forth. Great feature, very nice. And again, something that sets those consoles apart. Now, the other, another unique feature, of course, is expandable storage. Both of them have expandable storage in two different ways. So with the PlayStation 5, you have to open up your console and put in an M.2, which Sony hasn't allowed yet. They said they will give you a list of M.2s, PCIe Gen 4 to use. Uh, once that becomes available, you can buy something off the market and then just pop to your PlayStation. While the Xbox Series X is a bit different, uh, it's got a custom M.2 slot at the back, which you can use a custom Seagate drive, which is rather expensive right now for one terabyte. So Microsoft has taken this UI approach a little different, uh, expanding what they have, where it's now a top-down scrolling feature, where the games you're playing are at the top, as well as also your games library. Then you can move into Game Pass and then the store, and you can also find your apps quite easily and accessible. Expand it from what it was. There's also some sub menu functions using the Xbox button to hit home and also go into share features. Sony has a different approach. Sony's uh, new UI system has a hub approach where you have a games hub and a media hub. Uh, and the games hub has everything to do with your games. Your games are at the top of the screen. You can scroll through those games and it gives you more details as you scroll down within each of those games. Things you've recorded, captures, what friends are doing, that kind of stuff. You can move over, to, move over to the Media Hub, which has all your media features like your uh, Netflix, your Hulu, your HBO Max, all those different things packed in there. So it's a very different approach. I, I kind of like both at the same time. So for me, it's split right there. So looking at both consoles, I have to say that they are two very different approaches to the same thing. Microsoft wants to give you a more honestly Netflix approach to gaming, which I kind of like, allowing me to explore and see more content while also giving me a very powerful console that can do more. 
Now we don't have a lot of first party titles yet, but we can't wait to see what Halo Master Chief does. And also all the new studios that Microsoft has acquired. And with Game Pass, it gives you a lot of games to jump in and play off the bat. And I think that is very key for them in that approach. While the PlayStation 5 is relying, of course, on first-party titles and that name recognition that Sony has. With the PS5, you're looking at games like Spider-Man, Miles Morales, a future God of War 5, things like that to excite gamers to say, hey, look, this is what the PlayStation does. I think as a gamer, you have to look at each one and see where does it fit you. For me, though, in terms of disappointments, I have to say that I, on the Microsoft side, I wish there was one first-party game that I really could use and showcase, not some other ones that I enhance. On the PlayStation side, uh, I wish they actually copied Microsoft and gave us an Xbox Game Pass, which would be great, or at least a PlayStation Game Pass, if you will. And also Sony, seriously, HDMI 2.1 cables. Would he kill you to give us one of these in the box? Now, before we wrap up this video, I am giving away a console and we are giving away an Xbox Series S with my buddy Danny Wingate, but not just an Xbox Series S. This is a bundle package. Thanks to our friends from Microsoft, uh, from Seagate, as well as Steel Series. Now, what you, you get to win here is an Xbox Series S with one year of Xbox Game Pass. You get to win one terabyte uh, storage from Seagate, expandable, so you expand the storage on the Xbox Series S, and you also get to win uh, a Steel Series Arctic's 7X headset for your Xbox Series S. So all you have to do is follow me on Instagram, leave a comment below, and you are entered to win. Now, guys, let me know what you think about the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5. Which of these two consoles fit you best? Now, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and always enjoy it.